Hello everyone, my name is Nils, environment artist at Sierra Division, and welcome back to the next chapter. In this chapter, we'll be going from our block out to what will be our low detail or low poly mesh. This mesh will then serve as a base for our high detail version. Before going into it, I want to show you the model that I have as a block out. As you can see, some things have changed and quite a bit of parts have been added. I'll be going over what exactly I changed and why. If your block out does not look exactly like this, some parts will be explained in the supplemental video linked here. The model will also be provided to you so you can follow along. If you like to do stuff yourself, I'll also provide the screenshots of all the sides so you can recreate it on your own. But again, feel free to watch the extra video linked below. All right, back to business. The model has been changed quite a bit. Nothing drastically, but the more and longer you look at reference pictures while trying to add extra parts to the model or block out, you'll realize that some parts aren't exactly 100%. But then again, without the exact scale, nothing will ever be 100% as some of it is just eyeballing. So I'm going to just rephrase it, some parts of my block out weren't 80%. That's why it's always easy to keep your block out as simple as possible. Focus on the main big shapes and work your way down without focusing too much on detail. That way, when changes need to be made, you won't lose a ton of progress. Let's look at some uh, reference pictures and see what I've changed. So the first thing I changed was this part and this part. Didn't really like the ratio, mainly because when I tried adding this part here, the spacing between the main lens and the body was quite big on my block out. So what I did was I grabbed this face and I just moved it out like this so it would fit better according to the reference. If you look at reference pictures here, you can see the gap is quite tiny. On my model, it kind of extended like this. So by changing the face, I avoided that problem. The next thing I did was add some fillets. Usually I wouldn't recommend already adding fillets to your model, but it helped me calculate the distance between these two faces a bit better. As long as it's no micro fillets, then it's fine. Another thing I did was to edit the curve here. I figured this one out by trying to create this shape here. This little boy here. And I noticed it was quite thin and long. Then looking at the reference pictures, I noticed that the curve on my model started quite a bit up. It's not perfectly in the middle, but I'll show you the old model so you get an idea. So this is where it started on my old model, and this is the new one. Then when I recreated that part, it looked a bit better. The only thing I did for this was create the sketch again, like we did on the last part, and change the location of the circle. After that, I had to create this part here again, this curve, so I just added another slot, and it kind of ends where this circle starts or ends. So if you look at the reference pictures, let me try to find a good front picture. You can see it's kind of on the same line. Other than that, I just added a couple of elements such as the lenses as a block out. Again, keeping it very simple. These parts here, which will be explained in the video that's linked below. But other than that, this is a great starting point. The main takeaway from this is that it's fine to not always do everything correct from the beginning. The more elements you add, the more imperfections start to show. But that's just part of the progress. You can't make the block out exactly the way it is the first try. All right, now that we've established the changes to the block out, let's get started on refining our block out. This part will be pretty straightforward, so not everything will be recorded. Just follow the same principles, adding details where needed, but not going overboard. We're aiming for a mid poly acid. If you want a lower poly count in the end, just be mindful of what details you want to bake and which details you want in the model. So right here is the model that I have at this moment. It can still be changed and it probably will. But if you want a lower poly count, 
feel free to just edit the model as you like. If you want a hero asset that you can rotate, zoom in, and it will be visible on the screen from up close, just leave it all in. If you want more of a background asset, you can just delete some edges like these, some fillets, especially the tiny ones, which I'll probably end up deleting anyways. Even this part, you can just leave it flat. You can bake in this little part right here, these things, the same for the front, if you want a very low poly model. So basically, it would look flat like this. It's all up to personal preference. I'll just leave in some high detail um, parts and I'll bake down some parts as well so you have a better understanding of the baking process. But all right, let's get into it. This is the blockout model that we ended with. This model will be available for download, as I said, but let's get started. The first thing I like to do is the structural part. I connect everything that needs to be connected, usually the big parts. So let's take a look at some reference. If you look at the references here, you can see this entire part is one big chunk of metal. It's all connected. The door is separated, but you don't really have to if you don't want to. So let's take a look at Fusion. Take a look with parts so we can edit and attach. So these are all the big parts. If you want to isolate them, you can just right click and isolate. Looks pretty good. You can select it all and press Ctrl B to combine. Um, you can put your shortcuts yourself and then just press OK. After that, we have one big chunk, just like the reference here. Then you can unisolate it and boom, there we go. So depending on how complex your model is, you might need to add more pieces together, um, pieces that would be connected in real life as well. But for this part, I think we have pretty much everything set. I don't really have a plan in my head or on paper what to do next. Um, basically, I just look at references and see what needs to be changed. Usually I tackle the big parts first and then start adding um, fillets and chamfers. So if you look at this model, our block out for now, and the low detail version, you can see structurally nothing has changed dramatically. They're mainly the edges, the shapes that have been refined, for example, the lenses and some um, fillets everywhere, but the base remains the same. It also depends how detailed your blockout is. If you have a blockout less detailed, then of course you'll want to add more stuff structurally, but for now we're at a pretty good place to start tackling the smaller details. So for the sake of the length of this tutorial, I won't be going over everything that I did. Um, I'll just be going over some shapes. So let's first get some of these items in here. Um, of course, this could be baked down. Um, I can remove it in later stages if I wanted to, but I just decided to keep it in. So this is fairly simple. You just click on the plane and press O for offset. You click on the outer edge and it'll automatically chain together. And then you just offset. You can put in a value of your own. If you look at references, I thought this was pretty close. There we go. And you can finish it and extrude it in. Now, if these bodies are extruded close to the body, um, it's going to cut them as well. So we don't really want to cut these bodies just now, just the main body. So I'm just going to snap it if I can, to those faces. And we should be good to go. Now, if you see on the references, it's kind of inset and it has a little outline. We can literally just do the same thing. Either we click a face and we press sketching, or you could do it in an easier way if it's a simple shape and you can press shell. So select your outer faces and click this little button here. And then you just drag the arrow now you can always change the thickness if you want by selecting the edge and using offset. One thing to note is that these faces will have a back face. So that's just how shell works. 
If you don't want it, you can just drag out the face if you want out of the model and it'll create a hole. Cool. Let's take a look at references and I think I'm just going to leave the hole in for now. And let's start focusing on this knob right here. As you can see, this part here has a black um, back face with some numbers on it and a knob which is kind of beveled and it has a little pointer here. So let's try to get that in as well. All right, so for the button, the thing that I like to do is make sure it's flush with the face behind it. Oh, actually, we just need to create the black face first. So we're just going to extrude the outer face and click new body. And to make it easier, we can give it a black color. There we go. Now we can check if it's flush. Select the back face. You just hold down the left mouse button and then you can select invisible faces or faces not visible to the camera. We can move it and snap to it. Cool. To get that rounded edge, what I like to do is offset it just a little bit more. Go to edge mode, select the outer edge and do a chamfer. Then do it something like this. You can check the references if you want. Maybe find a better one or a better angle. The thing is, um, some of these have different knobs. Of course, you can change it up if you want to. But let's just say, if we don't really find a good ref, it has a little bit of an edge right here. So we can just leave it as is. Press OK and select the outer one again. Fill it and drag it out just a tad. Now you can see this face has a kind of rounded edge. If you wanted a bit bigger, you can just do it like this. Offset the top face. All right, cool. Now, the reference, let's go all the way back, has a little pointer and it's kind of flush to the face. So let's isolate that one and create a sketch on the back face because it's flat. We want a middle line, so we're going to go to construction line, select the middle, go straight up. That'll make it easier to create the center point um, square, rectangle. Make sure to disable the construction line and just eyeball it. It doesn't really matter. You can always change it. Then we want to extrude it out with a cut. We'll kind of look at references. It goes quite deep and it's quite narrow. So let's drag it down just at that. All right, cool. Now you can create the little pointer by either um, creating a rectangle here, extruding this phase and creating it from this one. So we can, oh, we might as well do this, drag it out, create a new body and sketch on it. Then again, we want to create a middle line. There we go deselect construction line and just create a little triangle. Let's look at some ref first. Doesn't go that that high up. So we can click line again and create a tiny triangle. You can just mirror it by clicking the sketch then going to mirror line and creating the middle line that we made and click OK. Now you can extrude it out or you can just do this to cut it out and you already have the triangle. Now, if you look at it from the side, you can see that it's not quite flush with the body and it is like that on the reference. So we can just cut it by clicking the body, shift C to split the body, go to splitting tools and selecting this body and click OK and delete that face. Now it is flush with the body. You can join it together and there we go we have our knob. Now, the reference also has the same knob up top. Also with the little arrow, the little pointer. So instead of just like recreating it or copying and moving it manually, trying to kind of fit it together, you can just copy over this one, move it a little bit so it's more visible. You can go to the 
a line right here. You can search a line, click on it. You select the point where you want to align it from and to the point you where you will want to align it to. There you go. If it was flipped for some reason, you can always click this button and it'll flip the body. There you go. Easy. Cool. For the next part, we're going to tackle this little knob lever, whatever it is. On the reference, it's this one. And you can see it in solo mode here. We're going to create this thing. We already have the block out for it, but we're going to make it for the low detail version right now. Of course, um, you can keep it like that, but your silhouette will have uh, won't have the curve rather. So let's just isolate that one and check it out. You can see how it kind of curves. It's very minimal. Um, again, you could bake it down, but I don't think it will make that much of a difference. So you can just select it. And to get that curve in, we did a similar thing. We just press Shift C, but we don't want to tangent the chain, else it will select the entire outer edge. We just want to disable that one, get this edge in, and select it to two distances so you can move it. And you can do it like this. Now with the same trick, you can fill it, it and it'll be quite curved. You can do the same thing for the bottom ones, like so. And then it'll have the same kind of curve to it as well. So it's not a straight phase, it's a bit more interesting. So if you want it to be um, mirrored, because now obviously uh, you would have to do it on both sides. And sometimes when you do it, let me just undo it real quick, and you select both sides, for example this, and you press Shift C or chamfer, and you do two distances, it kind of messes up the, mm, the mirror part. So let's just get that in again. Cool. So instead, we want to just create a construction midplane. Cut it in half using that plane. Then mirroring it using that same plane. Cool. Now you can see here it's kind of kind of sharp. You can always drag out that plane by either extruding it just a little bit then you can just mirror it instead on the extruded part. There we go. You can hide your construction line. Then we have the shape in already and you can round the edges if you want. Cool, there we go. Then I'll see you guys again.